If it sounds too good to be true, it always is. I saw this on eBay <coughs> and it was £15. And I thought, well, I don't want to spend a lot of money on tools because I'll probably only use it once on here. So I thought, oh, I'll give it a go and buy it. I couldn't believe what turned up. Instead of being cast steel, drop forged, it's actually not drop forged, it's cast iron. And it's all been ground so roughly, I can't believe that anyone would do that. If you look at that dolly there, it's all lumps in there. It's not flat. So if you use that, you end up putting more dents in than you probably got. Uh, and that one, that one's got a hollow in the middle. So that's definitely going to make dents. And they're just roughly ground on a linisher probably no more than two minutes on each one and then they put it in the box so I spent the last about two hours polishing it because I'll, I'll probably use this one on the inside of here um, and it's cast iron so it, it did polish up all right and it's all nice and smooth and I polished I polished that one hammer but it's cast iron so I don't know how it's going to hold up um, before I saw this on the internet, I thought I'd make my own one, so I made that dolly. That's just ordinary mild steel, uh, which is about the same radius as this, or a bit less. And I made that, what they call a slapper, but I don't know if that's too thick, or I don't know, I've never used one before. But what gets me is, how can someone actually make that and think that anyone could use it? It's just, it's just beyond me. I've been most of the morning trying to stretch this patch because when I try these, these three templates on, on here, there's a gap, there's a gap under, under each one. So the idea was to put that at the back and hit it and try to stretch the metal so it would make more of a radius but I've been all morning and nothing's really happened it hasn't been successful really at all so I've given up with that um, but what I have noticed is the left hand template is good good but the, those two red lines there and everything in between is a little bit lower it's not too bad actually when I put that template all the way along even right up that end so um, I'm going to leave it at that and I managed to get the high spot down there was a high spot there um, so when I put the wall, the wall in it's from, from there to there is, is all lower which will take up, take up a, a very small skim of filler I'm finally ready to weld the last patch on the inner seal here um, and I've formed this thing with, with a, um, a hammer and a chisel um, in the vise and I made a wooden wooden thing to f start forming that with. Uh, Mark, Mark Gilborn suggested I use a hammer, chisel and a bolster which I did by opening the jaws or the vice and just hammering it until it got right. Thank you Mark for uh, suggesting that. Um, and now I'm ready to fit it. I've, I've put two coats of uh, World Through Primer on here and I'm just going to hold it on with magnets and start to weld it. That patch is all done now. I weld it all round and then ground it flush and then put two coats of uh, weld through primer on there um, and it suddenly occurred to me how am I going to check for pinholes and I remembered in one of my jobs I, I uh, maintain press tools and I use one of these fibre optic cables um, so I've just put it onto the end of that torch and it shines a light so I was able to put these cables one 
in this hole and there's one on the inside of the car and I did find some pinholes so probably didn't get rid of all the pinholes um, but anyway it's done now it's covered by the jacking point anyway so that part is done it's the following weekend and this morning I've been making this fit and the idea was to get it so that there's no gap between these flanges and the bodywork. I drilled these three sixteenths holes and I'm going to plug weld all, all around there and I've just sprayed that with uh, weld through primer um, and now I'm going to weld it. The jack and point is welded, um, it's all finished, I've ground the plug welds down and um, I've just sprayed it with weld through primer all over and I've found, well I've used this before, it's an old tin of red oxide paint and it's so old it's gone really thick so I, I used this when I did the inner wing at the front and basically what I'm getting all the joins I'm just dabbing it on all the joins um, like a seam, some like a kind of a seam sealer to stop any water getting into the joints The jacking point is complete now. Um, I've put that red up, two coats of the red oxide on all the joints around the jacking point. Um, and I'm going to spray the final coat of silver paint on there. Um, that's all finished. Um, so that concludes this video. So that jacking point's not bad, it only took me nine years to fit. So the next thing to do is I've got a hole that I repaired up here and it's got filler on it. I don't know, I can't remember what's under that filler so I'll strip all that off and have a look at it and uh, maybe re-weld it. There's a, there's a bit of rust along here somewhere and there's a patch on here that's just been placed on there I'm taking that off, I'm going to weld that patch back in, another patch. And there's holes along here, it looks as though I, I, I welded it inside the boot. I don't even remember doing it, but I must have done. And there's a bit of rust along where the valance meets this. Uh, it's, this is the valance, it's where it meets the, the back section. There's a hole there. So that's the next video so that's it what I will do is um, post some photos at the end of this video <laughs>